Te de koto te faro o Aotearoa Unitarians. Te de koto na manahiri, no mai haramai, ki te de hui topa a te atua, te de koto te de tato kato. Well, welcome to you all to our virtual playground. For to play is worship. Let, let us sing the magic of imagination by which we know one another. Let us sing the magic of creation by which we build the world and teach its wisdom to others, young and old. Let us sing the magic of our lives together, breathing new life into all that connects us. Let us, now, let us now worship singing with magic in our fingertips, touching this world playfully with life. My opening words are by a favorite poet of Unitarians, Mary Oliver. It's entitled Mindful. Every day I see or hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in the haystack of light. It was what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. And to live out those words, our opening song is Walking on Sunshine. Well, I hope that's now stuck in your head for the week. Um, what I liked about it was the girl in the very back who obviously was struggling walking on sunshine. And if I were in that video I'd, with my dad's moves, I'd probably be further back than she was. But anyway, hope it brought you some joy. Our chalice lighting, do you have your candle or your chalice, is by Amaret Calloway and yours truly. Bring what, bring with you what is yours, a burdened heart, a joyous song, a wearied spirit, a seeking mind, bring the gift of yourself to the chalice. It is an honorable gift full of light, if I can light it. It's poetry day. For our reading this morning, I've selected another poet who's a favorite of Unitarians, Anne Sexton, and her poem, Welcome Morning. Anne suffered from bipolar and really had a lot of depression and suicidal ideation so that she could write a poem like this, I find uh, encouraging. There is joy in all, in the hair I brush each morning, in the cannon towel newly washed that I rub my body with each morning, in the chapel of eggs I cook each morning, and the outcry from the kettle that heats my coffee each morning, in the spoon and the chair that cry, 
Hello there, Anne. Each morning in the godhead of the table that I set my silver plate cup upon each morning. All this is God right here in my pea green house each morning. And I mean, though often forget to give thanks, to faint down by the kitchen table in a prayer of rejoicing as the holy birds at the kitchen window peck into their marriage of seeds. So while I think of it, let me paint a thank you on my palm for this God, this laughter of the morning, lest it go unspoken. That joy that isn't shared, I've heard, dies young. You may have found, like me, that one of the things that has helped sustain me through these long days of the pandemic uh, is the Marsh family. The Marsh family live in Kent, England, uh, and they spend lockdown writing parodies and singing parodies of songs. And uh, I've chosen, they have many of them now online, but the one I'm going to play is the one that first went virtual around the world. Over 30 million listens have happened to this song and to their others. It's one day more from a biz adapted by them. This is, as their first one, uh, if you go to their later ones, because we've been doing this for a while, their musical abilities keep growing and they play numerous instruments and uh, help us laugh in the midst of our darkness. So uh, treat yourself, go to YouTube, type the Marsh family, and you can spend the whole afternoon uh, enjoying them. For my musings, I thought it was time to break some of the darkness and to talk about the magic of play. Ralph Waldo Emerson once observed that it is a happy talent to know how to play. But I have found it a difficult talent to utilize over the past couple of years. The last time I can remember being immersed in play was doing the chicken dance at Rachel's of my wedding. It was also the first day someone entered the country infected with COVID and life changed dramatically for me in two ways. Getting married does that for everyone. The other change encompassing us all occurred six weeks later when we went into lockdown, busy hoarding toilet paper. Three lockdowns later, our capacity to play has been severely hampered. Matthew Fox, a former Catholic, now Episcopalian priest, and mystic reminds us that there is a mystic in every one of us yearning to play in the universe. I know that yearning. I need more than binging on Netflix or taking out the recycling to feel alive. Well, I enjoy both cats and dogs. Waldo reminds me daily to be less aloof and allow myself to experience and engage in more fun and joy. 
Last weekend, Waldo had a house guest, a terrier named Arvo. At first, Waldo was miffed that Arvo had been invited into his territory without his permission. But soon he got over it. He could not resist engaging in full-time play. Tug of War seemed to be a favorite. They remind me of a piece of wisdom by Kurt Vonnegut. I tell you, we are here on earth to fart around and don't let anybody tell you different. I was taking life way too seriously. I'd forgotten how to fart around, was left wondering why I am here. Anthony McCarr in a UU World article tells a favorite story of psychologist Dr. Peter Gray about being invited to play Scrabble with two young girls. Gray saw this as an opportunity to teach them. The girls loved the basic setup of the game, but had no interest in the actual rules and instead made up their own. Their unstated go but obvious goal on each turn was to put down the longest, funniest nonsense word they could, using as many letters as possible from their rack combined with at least one letter on the board. It had to sound like it could be a word, but it could not be an actual word. The object was not to score points, but to make each other laugh. And laugh they did. They laughed like only two high-spirited 10-year-old girls who have long been best friends can laugh. Sometimes one would challenge the other's word, asking for a definition, and the other would offer an hysterical definition that somehow seemed to fit with the way the word sounded. And then they would laugh even harder. As Gray gave up on his idea of teaching them and began to laugh along with them. He realized his way of playing was something like what we usually call work. Their way of playing was, was play. He began to reflect on what is the vital difference between play and play. He reached the conclusion that he too used to play like that as a child. What makes play play? In researching it, Gray identified five factors that make play play. Play is activity, freely entered, is self-determining, is full of imagination, is valued primarily because it is enjoyable and is characterized by a mindset of utter absorption. What's amazing is how evolution, which is a practical and, and a, which is as practical and ruthless as you can get, seems to love playfulness. It's because play de develops our minds 
and it keeps it sharp. It's because play can provide safe outlets for releasing aggressive impulses. It's because risky play teaches kids how to regulate fear and anger. We play because play teaches us how to take turns, while which is nothing less than the basis of civilization. We play because it gives us the opportunity to connect and socialize. We play because it enlivens our imaginations, opening doors to new insights and connections. It turns out not playing is contrary to our nature. So what has happened? I certainly know what happened since I chicken danced over two years ago. There's been a lot to be serious about, and there still is, there always is. But if things are serious, that may be when we most need our playfulness. And when things are serious, that's also what playfulness has been preparing us for since we were little kids. There's a reason why playfulness is explicitly part of so many of the world's religions. Play helps us get out of our heads. When we become absorbed in it, we let go of the self-awareness that is so often accompanied by an inner critic. It's very liberating. We transcend ourselves for a while Religion offers transcendence. We see it in the mass, many creative rituals, music, liturgical dance, funny parables and jokes. Jokes are disarming. They come in sideways as tru at truths. The comedian Lenny Bruce is reported to have said, I know my humor is outrageous. When, I, when it makes the Unitarians so mad, they burn a question mark in my front lawn. We hold the truth lightly, but that does not mean we don't stand for anything. That's what this joke gets at, sideways. Alan Watt, who is a lifelong Buddhist and for a short time an Episcopal priest, said the universe seems to be essentially playful itself in the sense that it is totally unnecessary. It is not for a particular end. I find that an interesting idea. Watts pointed out that Hinduism describes the creation of the universe is li as Lila, meaning divide play. I think that Jewish and Christian stories of creation also seem like divine play. In them, God is improvising, imagining things into being and enjoying them, seeing that they are good. God creatively populates the earth with such creatures as the tasseled wabigong. A shark that sits motionless on the seafloor, pretending to be a carpet, waiting for an unsuspecting prey to swim a bit too close. Then there's the red-lipped batfish that walks instead of swimming and looks as though it is ready for a night on the town. And my favorite, recently discovered in the Peruvian Amazon, that looks like a Harry Potter film cast member, the chocolate frog. There is some good news about our loss of playfulness. The Reverend Angela Herrera notes that humans are one of the few animals that do not lose their capacity to play, even if they no longer do. This trait is called neoteny. It means retaining immature qualities into adulthood. 
And here you thought being immature was a bad thing. It turns out our playfulness, which humans are hardwired to retain all their lives, is one of our superpowers. It has helped us to be adaptive, resilient, and creative. Plagued by pandemics, an inflated cost of living, climate change, and the threat of nuclear war, we especially need those strengths right now, don't we? We face what seems insurmountable. As we face what seems insurmountable, our playfulness and our joy are not an aversion, but a strength. They are also irresistible. Who would you rather join forces with in the work for a better world? Playful people? I mean, Unitarians? Right. The people who've tapped into creativity and joy. We retain our playful hardwiring throughout our lives, but as we get older, people do tend to play less. In our work-oriented culture, play may be perceived as a waste of time. Also, our egos or negative self-talk might get in the way. Are there some ways you'd like to play, but you're holding yourself back? Maybe you think, that's too silly, or I'd look silly. It might help to know that the word silly comes from the old German word selig, which means blessed. Earlier, I quoted Alan Watts, arguing that the universe seems to be essentially playful itself in the sense that it is unnecessary. It is not for a particular end. On one level, I agree about it not being necessary. But on another, I take issue. In order for there to be beauty and awe, the universe was necessary. It was necessary in order for love to take place. It was necessary that existence could mean something. It was necessary that the bond between energies and particles, the interconnectedness of all things could be given extraordinary shapes. It is. It was necessary if we were going to have someone around to laugh at our jokes or to play Scrabble with. It is necessary so we have a place to fart around. The Reverend Marisol Kabir Arrow has written words that inspire me to draw upon my superpowers and play. To play is to pretend. And honestly, sometimes the world seems too heavy to leave the house. London's alone inspire moments of joy. But the more I watch the news these days, the more I'm coming to viewing, to view plain, intentionally seeking joy as a means of radical resistance. Come on, put on your Spider-Man PJs, bring your Wonder Woman Lariat, and join me in the Batmobile to save the world from its too serious self. line for that. Let us hear our closing song. My closing words are by Patrick Bateson, Paul Martin, and myself. A notable characteristic of play behavior is that it generally does not appear to have an immediate practical goal or benefit. Play appears to provide its own reward, at least in the short term. 
by being intrinsically enjoyable. So go forth and reap your reward. You will be energized, enlivened, unburdened, renewed, and open to new possibilities. And now, those of you who have a flame, let us extinguish it. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And the, the question is, how do you personally play as an adult? And how does it make you feel? Okay, how do you play as an adult? And how does it make you feel?